One of the stranger characters on the world scene right now would undoubtedly be Elon Musk. He has been described as everything from brilliant to a troll, from a visionary to simply being evil. Even on my channel, which is all about Donald Trump, basically, Elon Musk might be the second most mentioned name since I started making videos. And perhaps that is because even though he seems so different from Donald Trump, he also seems to be like him in many ways. And the strangeness of Elon Musk has been around for a few years now. In case you forget, back in 2018, there was a study by researchers at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill who wanted to determine if God had a face what would it look like in the eyes of their test subjects? 551 test subjects were shown hundreds of randomly varying pairs of faces and asked which of the two looked more like the face of God in their opinion. The result was a composite mugshot which showed that God is white, young, and clean cut and bared a strong resemblance to Elon Musk. But while the image of Elon Musk may reside in our subconscious minds somewhere, the fact is that at times, outwardly, he can be a very dark individual. Here's a short clip from his biographer talking about how Musk goes into dark demon mode. There's multiple personalities of Elon Musk, just as there are of his father. And there are times when Elon Musk is playful. There are times when he's trolling, which is almost like, you know, a sophomore's sense of humor stoned in a uh, college dorm room. You know, joking about, I'm going to get into a cage match with Mark Zuckerberg. You know, that was never going to happen, but yeah. it's part of his trolling, joking personality. But then he can turn very dark at times, and he can get very mean at times, and sometimes that's on Twitter too. He'll call yeah. a British cave diver a pedophile, or he will uh, amplify some people from the fringes that he's now allowed on Twitter. So you can't say, what's Elon Musk's personality? You have to say, they're different personalities at different times. Did you like him? Do you like him? Well, there were some Elon, I mean, that's such an anodyne uh, word, uh, and people keep asking that question. I say, you know, there are Elon Musk that I liked and Elon Musk that I didn't. His girlfriend, one of his girlfriends, Claire Boucher, known as Grimes, said, you got to make sure you're with the right Elon. There are certain Elons that are inspiring and um, certain that are charming, charismatic, uh, certain ones that, you know, just are funny. But there are also times when, in a flash, he'll go into being a dark or conspiratorial or angry uh, Elon. And boy, I didn't like those when I was around those Elons. And could you believe all the different Elons you came across? Did you believe what those Elons told you? You know, it's interesting. Sometimes Musk would say certain things when he was in demon mode, just like his father, who had a Jekyll and has a Jekyll and Hyde personality. And he would say things in dark demon mode, sometimes really horrible things to people in front of him. And afterwards, when he snapped out of it or a few hours later, I go back to him and I say, hey, what did you mean by that? Mm. Did you really mean it? Whatever. And he would almost have no recollection of what he said. It was almost as if uh, he just switched from mode to mode. Is there something scary about someone who, as you put it, goes into demon mode? now and again, wielding as much power as he does. Yeah, I do think so. I think especially uh, when he gets into those dark modes, it's been particularly um, problematic for what used to be known as Twitter, where he'll amplify people in dark modes and it becomes a problem where he creates an environment that advertisers don't want. One of the themes of my book is how did he achieve so much? How did he do it? How come his rockets can go into orbit, boost things into orbit, and then land upright and be reused again, where no other company and no other country has been able to do that? The ability of Musk to fly into dark demon mode could be one of the things that has attracted him to Donald Trump. Although Trump seems to do it on purpose, while Musk has been described as having multiple personalities. 
There was recently a rather stunning image in the German magazine Der Spiegel, which showed that underneath Elon Musk was Donald Trump. About two and a half years back, I did a video on whether Elon Musk might be destined to work with Donald Trump. And I have had a couple of suggestions that I play that video again, only because it gives some insight into the exceptional power that Elon Musk has now more than ever. Back in early 2022 when I did that video, I really didn't have too many subscribers, to be honest, since most have come on board this year. So for those of you who haven't seen that video, I'm going to play that now. For anyone who has already seen that video, I guess you can stop watching this video now, and I'll be back soon with another video. In this video, we'll take a brief look at Elon Musk, the various companies he owns, and his recent acquisition of Twitter in a deal which should be finalized in the coming months, and also whether Musk and Trump just might be destined to work together. Musk is not only the world's richest man, but he is so by a wide margin. Current estimates of his net worth range from $250 to $290 billion. That's not only $100 billion more than Amazon's Jeff Bezos, it's more money than Bill Gates and Warren Buffett combined. Beyond the truly staggering amount of wealth that Musk presently has, he also owns a variety of companies that will influence and possibly even control much of our day-to-day -day lives within the next couple of years. His stable of companies range from SpaceX to Tesla to OpenAI to Neuralink to The Boring Company, and now Twitter, and they not only use cutting-edge technology, but they often blur the lines between human and machine. SpaceX has made headlines for its reusable rockets, the latest of which has the ominous-sounding name of the Dragon. SpaceX is also known for its planned network of satellites called Starlink that seek to provide internet connectivity over the entire Earth. The FCC has already granted SpaceX permission to fly 12,000 Starlink satellites, and the company has filed paperwork with an international regulator to add an additional 30,000, bringing the total to 42,000 satellites in low orbit around Earth. To put that number in perspective, as of January 5th of 2022, only 12,480 satellites have been launched in all of history, and less than 5,000 are still active to this day. The Starlink project would single-handedly increase that number nearly tenfold. Plans for such a massive amount of satellites orbiting the Earth, all owned by one company and all communicating with each other, has already drawn comparisons between the Starlink project and Skynet, the artificial intelligence from the Terminator movies. Another company owned by Musk is OpenAI, which is an artificial intelligence research laboratory he co-founded in 2015. OpenAI seeks to build a machine with human intelligence, and its AI has been trained on trillions of words from the internet. Neuralink was started by Musk in 2016, and is developing an implantable brain-machine interface. In August 2020, Musk unveiled a pig with a coin-sized computer chip in its brain as a proof of concept. Neuralink has obtained an FDA breakthrough device designation, allowing the company to conduct limited human testing. The technology is described as helping people with disabilities, but it's easy to visualize how it could quickly expand to other areas of the human experience. Tesla was founded in July 2003, and the company's name is a tribute to the eccentric inventor and electrical engineer Nikola Tesla, who died back in 1943. In February 2004, Musk became the largest shareholder of the company and has served as CEO since 2008. Earlier this year, Musk announced the release of the Tesla phone, which might be available later in 2022. The phone, thought to be named Pi, will include Neuralink support and be connected to Starlink. 
Obviously, the purchase of Twitter by Musk is being celebrated by Republicans who have long believed that Twitter was marginalizing and often banning conservatives. The most prominent of those, of course, is one Donald J. Trump. But if you're wondering whether the vile one is planning to return to Twitter, according to Trump, he is not, but intends to remain on his ironically named Truth Social. Personally, I think it's just a matter of time before Trump does return to Twitter, but we'll see what happens. Speaking of the ironically named Truth Social, Musk tweeted that Truth Social should instead be called Trumpet. Truth Social, terrible name, exists because Twitter censored free speech should be called Trumpet instead. One thing for sure, if Truth Social was ever renamed Trumpet, the many Christians who are already deluded by Trump will actually see that as yet another sign that Trump was chosen by God for these end times. Many of you have left comments or sent me emails regarding the strange feeling you get from Elon Musk, and I have the same vibes. As some of you pointed out, even the Tesla logo looks evil or demonic. The comparison of the Tesla logo to a satanic cross has been made, and it certainly has a darkness to it. Looking at it, I'm reminded that Donald Trump also uses a T to designate his name, and both of these logos do seem to mimic, or mock, the Christian cross. A moment ago, I mentioned how the Tesla company was named after inventor Nikola Tesla. As many of us know, Tesla is famous for coming up with alternating current, which remains the world's standard for delivering electricity. He devised the induction motor, the Tesla coil, and long-distance radio transmission. However, Tesla also used his deep understanding of electricity and radiation to dream of far more darker inventions, including one that was called a death ray. After Tesla died, the government was extremely interested in his unpublished research, and his papers were temporarily seized by the Department of Justice Alien Property Custodian Office, in this case, alien meant foreigner, although it was still odd since Tesla was a U.S. citizen. Investigators and specialists examined the documents, recorded them on microfilm, wrote up reports, and added the material to their existing file on Tesla. The FBI waited decades to declassify the papers, releasing 250 pages in 2011. But in 2016, the Bureau uploaded 64 new pages to its public file vault on Tesla, and one page read as follows. Tesla's only military invention was a means whereby an impenetrable wall of force can be erected around the United States borders, which would render helpless any military attack. Tesla disclosed the existence of his plan in 1934 and stated he intended to present it to the Geneva Conference, but seldom referred to it afterward. Not much is publicly known about Tesla's files beyond this, but there is one very odd fact. After Tesla died, the person responsible for examining his files was none other than the electrical engineer and military technology researcher John G. Trump, the uncle of Donald J. Trump. At some point, I'll probably do a deeper dive into Elon Musk because not only is the world's richest man on a threshold of controlling much of the technological landscape, but there simply seems to be an odd, uncomfortable vibe about the man. In some ways, it's comparable to how many of us felt about Trump at one point, when there was just an uneasy feeling about how he burst onto the scene, even if we couldn't specifically identify the problem with him. We should also take note that the world's wealthiest man also happens to be on the cutting edge of technology that could one day control the world. From his Starlink satellites, to Neuralink, to his AI research, to his Tesla phone, everything is lining up for a world controlled by Musk. Musk is certainly not the Antichrist, because the Bible describes the character traits of the Antichrist, and they match Trump perfectly. The fact that both Israel and evangelicals love Trump is also very telling to me. Strong delusion indeed. How about the false prophet? With his cutting-edge technology, could Musk be the one that gives life to the image of the beast? Perhaps, but the false prophet will need to galvanize the world's religions, and this seems out of the purview of Musk. I still believe that a coming pope will be the false prophet, and the Catholic Church has, in fact, been working on uniting all religions for quite a while now. It's difficult to see Pope Francis fulfilling this role, since there is a lot of animosity between him and Trump. The Antichrist kingdom will require an operating system for the world. 
And who better to run that than the man who is on the cutting edge of AI technology, implantable brain-machine interfaces, and tens of thousands of satellites that connect everyone all around the world. He may not be the Antichrist, or even the false prophet, but in the Antichrist kingdom, there will be a need for a man to design and run the worldwide beast system. And in my view, Elon Musk is the leading contender for that. That's all for today's video, so thank you for watching. If you care to leave a comment, please do. As always, kindly be respectful in any comment you leave, especially toward those with whom you disagree. I'll talk to you guys soon.